Bird will sing its song. Watch segment is the tropical update, so we'll definitely give you the latest on the tropics. As a matter of fact, that's what we'll talk about first. And we want you to know that no tropical cyclone development is expected across the Atlantic Basin over the next 24 to 48 hours. So the next couple of days look pretty nice across the Atlantic Basin. So this weekend, if you are planning a cruise across the Caribbean or the Bahamas, it looks fairly nice as we have nothing organized to speak of at all. Now, even though the upper air wind flow is favorable for development, Development. We don't have anything going on at the surface. Let's zoom into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean then to see what it looks like. And there you have the quiet scenario, the waters of the Caribbean looking good, the Gulf of Mexico here. The Bahamas, we have had some thunderstorm activity with this a larger area of convection just north of Cuba and across the southern Bahamian chain. But this is not an organized tropical system. We've had no signs of low-level circulation. Just the overall thunderstorm activity in a concentrated area. And actually, it looks as though the thunderstorm activity has weakened over the last four to five hours here. As you notice, the overall deep convection is not as great because the deeper convection has been indicated by the reds and the oranges here. And you know, we, you notice we start to trade to the blue colors and so that indicates perhaps a, a weakening trend of the overall thunderstorm activity but nonetheless it's not a tropical system uh, at all. We do have uh, quiet conditions across Jamaica and Puerto Rico here, and all of the islands that make up the Lesser Antilles, the Windward, the Leeward Islands, look at the quiet conditions here this morning a little farther east across the open waters here of the Atlantic. We've had little thunderstorm activity, but again, very, very quiet, unusually quiet across the Atlantic Basin. Now, we have had one system to come off of the African coast. You can see a little swirl, a little spin with it, but it doesn't have much convection. So we don't think that this system has too much of a chance to develop, but we'll continue to watch it because we have uh, denoted a little spin with it even though convection is minimal. Our latest wave that has come off the coast, you know, it started off pretty impressive with quite a bit of convection, but as it moved over the open waters, it just really started to fizzle. And we'll watch this. Now this one doesn't have a lot of spin with it, even though initially it had impressive convection, but it's quiet. As all systems come off of the African coast, they seem to lose a lot of their punch. But this whole area we will continue to watch now as we go through the month of August because uh, this time of year things uh, based on climatology could certainly continue or could certainly develop as they cross over the waters here of the Atlantic. But again, th this morning or throughout the day, in the next 48 hours, we do not see anything developing across the Atlantic Basin. Though we want you to know that we're working our way toward the peak of hurricane season. The peak is the middle of September, so we are still keeping our eyes very uh, open for the development of possible tropical systems across the Atlantic Basin, but nothing has developed so far. Now, the Eastern Pacific, on the other hand, has been a lot more active. We still have Hurricane Georgette. It has strengthened even more so overnight. Now, with winds of 115 miles an hour, that makes it a Category 3 on the Saffir Simpson scale. It's moving to the northwest at 15 miles an hour. It is 665 miles west southwest of Cabo San Lucas, which is right here, the southern tip of Baja, Mexico. Now, five to seven foot open ocean swells expected for the uh, western facing beaches here in Southern California, in Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Los Angeles counties. So swells will be fairly large from this system, as you can clearly identify the eye of the storm, and the deep convection is rotating right around the center of the storm. So this is a very well-organized hurricane. It is expected to weaken, though, as it continues on its northwest track. 
as it will move into cooler waters. But the biggest effect here will be the high swells along the southern California coast. So beachgoers, beware, as we do have a hurricane well uh, to the south and west of the southern California coast. Thunderstorms possible with this cold front. We'll talk more about this next on Weather Center. It's a wet start to the weekend as rain soaks the southeast and Texas. Find out if more thunderstorms are on the horizon. Watch Weather Center after your local forecast. Migraine pain. The blinding light. The nausea. The piercing pain. You may think nothing can help the pain, but new prescription Zomig can for most types of migraine. Zomig is clinically proven to relieve migraine pain after the attack is underway. That's the power of new Zomig. Get this free migraine information kit with savings on your first prescription. To learn more, talk to your doctor or call 1-800-713-2245. Zomig is not for everyone. If you have certain types of heart disease or uncontrolled blood pressure, you should not take Zomig. Very rarely. Storm watch this go around is going to feature your national forecast. Also, the development of some very strong storms now in Upper Michigan and extreme north central Wisconsin. We'll have that coming up, if not within the next couple of minutes at the top of the hour. But right now, we're going to check in on the tropics. It's time once again for a look at our tropical update. And standing by is our tropical coordinator, John Hope. Well, thank you very much indeed, Will. And we're going to start in with a hurricane off the west coast. This is Hurricane Georgette. It is a major hurricane, sustained winds 115 miles an hour. Any hurricane is classified as major if the winds exceed 110. This hurricane is staying well away from uh, Baja, California, and of course Southern California as far as the winds go. But nevertheless, it has produced some big waves out there that are coming now into Southern California beginning today and especially noticeable on the southward facing beaches. The swell will be increasing today and tonight and sort of peak out over the weekend, but it will be with you all weekend, so surfers have a good time out there, but do be careful. I want to show you a classical picture of this hurricane. Uh, this is the infrared picture, and we can see the eye wall is shown in the brighter red all the way around the storm. Big eye, it's about 30 or so miles in diameter. And the hurricane, of course, uh, sends out big waves in all directions since it is circular. But the ones that we're interested in now are the ones that are going toward the north that are generated around the east side of the hurricane. Those are the ones that are headed for the Southern California beaches. Already some big swells on the coastline in Baja, California. But what about the Atlantic? Here we are, we're approaching the peak of the hurricane season, which occurs in September. In August, many times we see the frequency of hurricanes rise rather abruptly. Not this August so far though. As a matter of fact, looking at the situation today, we don't really see anything out there in the Atlantic that we think is about to develop into a storm anytime soon. We have some very dry air in the upper and mid-atmosphere that extends down through the Caribbean and for thousands of miles out over the Atlantic. What you see off the coast of uh, Florida here in South Carolina, that's an old front there. We have strong westerly winds at upper levels, no chance of any development there. Few showers developed here, I'll show you that on a different picture, in the Bahamas this morning, and they've kind of dissipated. This is getting a little bit interesting, though. We have a low pressure of the upper atmosphere over Florida, and we got a bit of a ridge of high pressure developing north of Cuba, but so far, no sign of any organization there. And as you can see, a lot of clear skies in the Caribbean. You don't see any showers until you get way down there, uh, right off the coast of Panama. We see some. The same is true with the Gulf of Mexico. We have uh, westerly winds at upper levels uh, in the Gulf and even at the surface, which is kind of anomalous. We don't see that very often in August. Out in the Atlantic, we have just one tropical wave worth noting. That's out here, uh, maybe a little bit of rotation around, oh, say, uh, uh, 17 degrees north and 31 or 32 west, or about 1,400 or so miles east of the Caribbean. But certainly, 
the thunderstorms are pretty skimpy and have not increased any. Now off the coast of Africa, the waves coming off have sort of been losing all their heavy showers once they get offshore. They look pretty formidable sometimes as they come off Africa. If one here, maybe you see a little circulation, but unless we get a lot of heavy showers around the center of these disturbances, they're not going to develop. So the bottom line is in the Atlantic, all is quiet. Don't see anything coming up anytime soon. That's the tropics. Now let's see what Will can tell us is what's going on here in the USA. Will? Okay, John, we'll talk about our national forecast beginning with midday on this Friday. Already this front beginning to cruise through northern Wisconsin and upper Michigan has produced some uh, rather big time storms. Thunderstorms now have become severe right around Marquette, Michigan, down towards Rhinelander, Wisconsin. A few more of those will be developing into severe limits this afternoon too. Northeastern quarter looks good for the afternoon, no problems there. If you live in the southeastern part of the country and stretching all the way back into Texas, you could be looking at some more heavy rain. That's already occurred this morning, just north of San Antonio, Texas, along the Louisiana coastline for sure, and also east of Atlanta, Georgia. After a night of some big time rains around Atlanta, northeast of town around Gainesville, up to five to six inches of rainfall there, and more is on the way. Here comes later on this evening, it's gonna be looking like this. The front may be a thunder shower from Milwaukee by the time the evening comes to a close. And the chances of rainfall on the increase over the Southern Appalachians, much of central. Thanks so much for joining us for Stormwatch. Coming up shortly, I have a look at thunderstorms across the south and the potential of flash flooding conditions. Right now, though, Dr. Steve Lyons has our tropical update, and he's going to tell us the latest on Hurricane Georgette. Well, thank you, Rich. And uh, it's tropical update time, and Hurricane Georgette's still out there and still uh, producing some waves, although those waves are no longer going toward the coast. For the most part, they're going out to sea now. Let's have a look at it. Here's the latest imagery, a sort of a large scale picture. You can really see that the rest of the tropical uh, Pacific, not much in the way of activity. Some big thunderstorm areas, but nothing in the way of development. Here's Georgette out here, continues to move to the northwest. Let's get the latest statistics on that. Here it is, 21.4 north, 121.8 west. Wind's still 110 miles per hour. That's just barely, that's just one nautical mile below Category 3 hurricane. So it's still a pretty strong hurricane, but luckily it's not moving toward the coast, still going toward the northwest at 17 miles an hour. The speed's increased. Here it is at near, this is Baja, California. Here it is out here. That's about 760 miles to the west-southwest of Cabo San Lucas on the southern tip of Baja, California. Now, if we look at a satellite image, we're gonna see a very nice circulation there, but the only impact this hurricane is gonna have on the coast is in the way of swell. And here it is here, the eye of the hurricane right here, some nice spiral bands, but we're, we're beginning to see some significant weakening in the system. And that you can see with this stratocumulus cloud here, these low clouds are starting to spiral in and eat away at the thunderstorms on the western side. That trend will continue the next 48 to 72 hours as it gradually uh, spins down. Now, in the way of hurricane swell, it's already propagating swell off to Baja and Southern California, and we have about three or four foot swell already in Southern California, and we expect it to get up to about five to seven feet. So those south-facing beaches, Southern California, Malibu, uh, places like uh, Point Magoo, a uh, lot of other good places like the Newport Wedge, get out your body surfing uh, swim fin for the wedge. The waves are gonna be pretty good down there. I can remember the days I used to do that. Now, as we go off into the Atlantic, uh, don't be too surprised if we don't see one of those coming generally toward the coast of the United States sometime this summer, and we're getting closer and closer to the heart of the hurricane season. Just a reminder, you should be prepared, and if you're not, take this weekend when it's relatively quiet in the Atlantic to go out and get some of these disaster supply kits like, make sure you have a, plenty of water, food, flashlight, battery operated radio, first aid kit, and, and extra batteries as well. You can never be over-prepared, only under-prepared. As we go off in here to the Atlantic and see why it's so quiet, we see in the water vapor imagery here, this is basically sensing from satellite 
the moisture in the atmosphere and the dark areas are very dry. We see a very dry slot all the way across the tropics here and into the Caribbean Sea. And that is associated with sinking motion. And that sinking motion is associated with no tropical development at all. Now, as we go off here into the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, we see in the Gulf we have high pressure there. Westerly winds in the northern Gulf associated with the mid-latitude system producing some showers along the Gulf Coast, and that's fairly active, but nothing in the way of development there. The rest of the Gulf quiet. Caribbean Sea, basically straight line easterly trade winds slowing down near the coast near Panama, producing some thunderstorms there. We're in great shape there. Now, as we go out into the central Atlantic Ocean, here are the islands out in here, Puerto Rico here, just to get your bearings. We have a couple of weak waves here. One is here. That's going to affect the Leeward Islands in Puerto Rico over the next one and a half days or so. And another one over in here. And neither one of them is doing much of anything. That sinking air is putting a cap on all the thunderstorm development. And when that happens, we don't get any tropical development. We can see even that cap is being put on the waves as they come off the coast. A lot of thunderstorms as they move west. That cap takes over and the thunderstorms are gone. So great news for the tropics. However, that may not persist, so stay tuned to the Weather Channel for the latest on all your tropical updates. Now let's get back to uh, rain in the U.S. with Rich. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Steve Lyons, Doctor of Meteorology, and as he's told us, apparently of surfing, too. Well, as we look back out across the U.S., we see scattered thunderstorms. Some of these are producing very heavy rain out across areas of the Appalachians, also into South Texas. Watch out for the rain here. Could be water over the roadway, potential for several inches of rain heading out toward the coastal bend of Texas. Looking up around the coastal bend, lots of rain today with still the potential of some flooding. L.A., lower Alabama, heading up to Montgomery. That's where the storms are moving. An additional very heavy rain still making its way up through West Virginia. Much more about this, including your forecast, next on Weather Center. Wet weather is scattered throughout the southeast and is increasing in some areas. We'll show you where heavy rain is possible next on Weather Center after your local forecast. Is your car still running bad? Well, don't get mad. Get Motor Up, the no oil change engine treatment for a smoother, quieter, and cooler running car. Over three million people have already added Motor Up to... It's time for Stormwatch now with the Weather Channel, where each and every hour, in about 10 minutes till, we'll take a look at all the active weather across the country. We examine it all and look at where some of the hardest hit spots are. We discuss that, as well as we talk tropics with the uh, Tropical Update, which is a part of Stormwatch here at the Weather Channel. Get about 10 minutes till every hour. Keep you on top of it. Here's the action in the Pacific, first of all, with Hurricane Georgette. It's still around, although it is uh, beginning to weaken a bit, as you can see. You can see the areas of convection there with the uh, kind of falling away pretty fast, though right there, a little orange right there. What happens with an infrared satellite image is that the picture is taken from outer space and the highest, coldest cloud tops are assigned different colors, with the orange being some of the higher tops and the uh, yellow being beneath that and the blue further down from that. So you can look and see where the orange is kind of starting to wane a bit, starting to kind of kind of cool or kind of warm up rather as it starts to move along so we're not dealing with as much convection or kind of the bubbling nature of the storminess of the storm is not quite as active. One of the reasons why it's moving into cooler water so the fuel source it's drawing upon is uh, not as uh, abundant. It's not drawing that real rich tropical moisture it needs. Also, it's beginning to wrap in, and remember this motion here, the counterclockwise motion, starting to wrap in or entrain some drier air, starting to fly into this. What does that mean? Well, it means it's over the next 24 to 36 hours, starting to fade pretty fast. Although it's still hurricane strength, Hurricane Georgette, currently 22.4 north, 125 west at 100 miles per hour, and it's moving northwest around 16. Should continue to move away from land, that's the good news. First knot shows where it was classified as a tropical storm, and you can follow its path to its present position. Again, that trajectory will keep it moving away from land, which is a very good thing. What effects may we see in land? Well, look around Santa Barbara and uh, Ventura and LA counties, might see some open ocean swells in the four to six foot range. That means uh, surfers take note, could be seeing some uh, producing waves coming close to shore too that uh, could uh, kind of have one effect of that. But again, this thing will continue to weaken and move away from land. There's another vantage point. You can even see some of the, the clouds being kind of wrapped in here and the drier air coming in. And look at the convection or the storminess again, kind of quieting a bit as things are not uh, quite as active. Some uh, warming taking place. So the storminess is not as uh, obvious here, becoming a little quieter as it moves away. 
Let's talk about being prepared. Maybe you live in an area that's uh, prone to seeing some hurricanes. Maybe you've uh, encountered one yourself, or maybe you're new to an area. These are some of the things you need to think about for a disaster supplies kit. A reminder from the Weather Channel and the American Red Cross, a number of items you may want to keep around for actually any type of disaster that could affect you or your family. Look across now the uh, parts of the Caribbean Sea and portions of the Atlantic, too. Seek some. This is a water vapor image. It takes the most abundant moisture in the middle and upper levels of the atmosphere, and you can see it kind of represented by some of the whiter spots there where moisture is very apparent. See some darker spots right there? That means that's some dry air. The air is not rising up. It's kind of sinking. There's some sinking motion happening here. That means we're not dealing with them much in the way of a real likely spot for anything to develop. The air is just too dry. No real moisture for this uh, to be working with. So a tropical system would not be well fed as it moves into an area that's not uh, working to enhance or give it anything to work with. So it doesn't look like things will be too active in the portions of the Atlantic or the Caribbean Sea, and it's very quiet as you can tell here. Across land, across Cuba, and across Florida, you can see some convection. The storminess there flaring, but quieting down as we've lost daytime heating a number of hours back. Four storms popping here, but nothing really likely in Central America presently. A number of little spots have been moving along, some areas of convection being monitored, but uh, nothing really likely in this region presently. We did see a wave that moved off from around the Cape Verde Islands here off the western coast of Africa that did kind of fall apart. The actual wave to the north and the convection on the south side of it here. As it moved away, it kind of fell apart fast. It would have a long way to go to develop in anything further of a tropical nature, of a tropical developed uh, classified tropical system. Another wave about to exit. You see the convection there uh, from the south side of the wave as the wave continues to wiggle on. And again, it would have a long trek across the ocean. So we'll continue to monitor all the waves that exit this region and let you know if anything pops up. Across the contiguous 48, here's the look of things with some storms across the plains and even around Vegas right now, a pretty dramatic area, could still see the risk of some additional strong storminess here. Also, the upper Great Lakes, around Chicagoland, could we expect more rain? Yeah, I'd say so. Even Milwaukee, we might see some more rain for us as well. Moving through town, maybe like around Lansing, Illinois, we've got our showers now out over Lake Michigan, pretty wet. And in portions of Michigan itself, we may get wet again. Another round of storms coming through. Yeah, it could be affecting us into Rockford here over the next few hours. Southeastern U.S., more wet weather continues around Savannah and into parts of South Florida. At around South Beach tonight, could encounter some rain. Great place to be, nonetheless. Into Georgia, still pretty wet in some areas. Into Alabama and a bit of Mississippi. Quieter in New Orleans, where it was pretty wet today. Around Vegas, especially like around Henderson and even southern portions of Las Vegas uh, metro right now in Clark County. Severe thunderstorm warning is no longer in effect. that has expired, but around McCarran Airport here a little while ago, 51 mile an hour wind gusts reported about an hour back. So very windy, very stormy here. Again, wind the primary threat from these big storms as they move through. You can still expect winds and very heavy rains. Don't be surprised at all to see winds in the 40 to 50 mile an hour range. Here's a look at the big picture with the storms in the southwest, across the plains in the southeast, and still wet in parts of the northeast. We'll talk more about this and the Saturday forecast. Now. Clear skies may hold through the weekend in parts of the northeast and midwest, but some areas won't be so lucky. The latest conditions in your area next on Weather Center. Hi, I'm Bob Vila, and I want to show you another great innovation in Craftsman hand tools. It's the Craftsman Quick Wrench, exclusively from Sears. The quick wrench is a combination wrench with a unique open-end design that makes it work like a ratchet. During this edition of Stormwatch, we talk about some...